Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today in the first NFT Seattle event. Uh, so excited to be in the Northwest. I've run a couple of Comic Cons here and love the city. So really happy to be here with my friend uh, Yukai Chow. So yeah, for those who don't know, we've uh, been friends for a little while now. Why don't you tell everyone how, how we met and all that stuff? Yeah, so when, um, so I'll give a little background first and then I'll get into, you know, kind of how we became friends. So. Just as a little more background on me, um, I've been in the superhero world my entire life. So I grew up as a kid collecting sports cards, comic books, like a lot of kids. And it became such a big family business that my mom opened up a comic book store. I started a newsletter. It did so well that I created a magazine called Wizard. So I don't know if there's any comic book fans here, but that was the Bible for, you know, for decades. We sold literally million, we probably sold 100 million copies of our magazines globally. Uh, throughout the, the multiple decades. Um, but it was very interesting. During the mid-1990s, uh, we were selling probably about 400,000 copies of Wizard a month at the time, just in English, and decided to throw a little party for the magazine, called it Comic-Con, and 20,000 people showed up. And it was just an incredible experience because it, was, it really kind of galvanized that movement. All these people that were disenfranchised that felt like they didn't belong, all of a sudden felt like they had a place that they belonged to. And ultimately grew that into, I've run 180 Comic-Cons, uh, sold over five million tickets, but more importantly, reached billions of people around the world um, and made people feel special, make them feel like they were part of something bigger than who they were. And, um, and you know, what's fascinating is that it not only affected geek and nerd culture, but I think how anybody dealt with their fans uh, any brands or companies kind of work with their fans out there. And just, uh, you know, got into the Web3 space, and now, you know, I feel like we're at that same moment in time. You know, I get all the same feelings, you know, about those early days, you know, where we're all trying to do something really cool, the world doesn't understand it yet, um, but they will one day. And I'm just here to tell everybody we're on the right path. I've been here before, I've felt it. And I, it's in my bones, so, um, so it's just great to see everybody here. Yeah, and uh, my journey actually started in a 2003 into gamification. Back then I was playing this game called Diablo 2, and I spent thousands of hours getting good gear, leveling up, getting gold, making my in-game characters strong. And at one point, my friends started quitting, so I'm like, okay, I guess I quit too. And I felt extremely empty. Just like, hey, look, I spent all this time making an amazing character in the game, accumulating these items, but once I quit, all that's gone, right? And I'm still the same loser in the real world. So I just thought, how can I play some kind of game where you know, the more hours I spend on it, the better my real life is. And the joke is that if back then there was this NFTs, right, all the things actually stayed, I can carry my, my character, my items, my achievements to another place, another place. I might have never actually gone into this journey of gamification. So over the years, wrote a book, sold a little over 100,000 copies. Uh, my entry into the Web3 world, more of the blockchain world, is uh, one of the, uh, the co-founders of Ethereum, Anthony DiOrio. He was a, a reader of my book, and he wanted me to help him as a chief experience officer for his uh, blockchain wallet. So, so that got me in, and then later, I got a lot more involved into Web3 because my book ended up being uh, very popular. In the, when I wrote the book, I didn't have this Web3 world in mind. It, there was already crypt, uh, cryptocurrency, but not all the NFT stuff. Uh, but apparently, like some people on Twitter say, there are two must-read books. One is the 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, which I haven't read yet, and the other is my book, so the other book must be pretty good, I guess. Um, <laughs> and so I started getting a lot of uh, invitation to do advisory and eventually uh, started my own uh, interpretation of what I think is like a long last kind of engagement in the NFT world, which is the Metablocks. Yeah, it's cool. And then, so you and I, and you and I met uh, through my co-founder, Scott Donald, um, when we started Hero Maker. We wanted to build worlds, you know, because my entire life in the comic book world and working with every single brand, whether it was Marvel, DC, Star, Marvel, DC, Star Wars, Pokemon, Harry Potter, you, you name the brand, we worked with everybody. And they had this philosophy where they told the fans, you know, play our games, buy our toys, watch our films, but the minute you do anything with our characters, we're gonna, cease, we're gonna send you a cease and desist and we're gonna sue you. And there was a line in the sand where they loved their fans up until a point, but don't cross that line. So the idea of starting something in Web3 
where all of a sudden the fans are part of that journey, where they're part of the ownership, um, it was critical. So my, my business partner was like, you gotta watch this TED Talk. It was by Yukai Chow on gamification. And it was like one of this kind of eureka moments for me because it was, you know, the comic book world is a very, um, it's very linear storytelling. And we needed to be in the three-dimensional world. So when we created characters, it needed to have a third dimension. It needed a game, what I call a gaming mechanic to it. Um, and it also needed to have a journey component to it. So when he said, you gotta meet Yukai, it was like, that was it. So, so we got introduced, uh, we worked with, uh, we brought in Yukai to work with us uh, in the er literally the earliest stages of the company to walk us through his journey, you know, and how he not only, uh, he literally invented the process for how to think about gamification. And um, so Yukai, if you wanna kinda take it over from there. Oh no, I think, uh, you know, when we look at the Web3 world right now, you know, I have a framework called the Octalysis framework, it's the word Octal Analysis, and it breaks down all human motivation to eight core drives, and all these different game design techniques. And when I see this Web3 world, it's just, it's like all of this up on steroids. You, know, you see the mystery box designs, the Easter eggs, you see all these quests and how people manage discords. Uh, but I think today, the biggest value that we can offer here is really talking about how to drive perpetual value, you know, perpetual engagement, long-term lasting value, because everything else is kind of like tactics, right? Everything else is like how to engage them, make them have fun. And, and it's the, the long-term kind of engagement that's the most important. And so when we think about long-term engagement, there's one of the eight core drives, something called epic meaning and calling, which is you're doing something because it's bigger than yourself. So what is that purpose and meaning in your NFT project? You know, in games, there is that higher meaning. It's like oftentimes you're saving the world or whatnot. Uh, where, and they'll say like, the world's about to end, but somehow you're the only person qualified to save the world, right? It feels very epic, amazing, you wanna go do that. Um, but that can be translated to the real world through gamification, you know, your project. If you don't have a higher purpose and meaning, why is humanity better 20 years from now because of your project, then people are there just because they think they can get rich in four months, and that's not gonna last, right? And so one of the most important things in establishing that higher meaning and purpose is through uh, storytelling and thinking about the hero's journey, which I think you've uh, really mastered that. So why don't you share about that? How do you implement that? Cool, yeah, so, um, you know, one of our core philosophies of the entire company is the hero's journey. So when we started with the premise of uh, world building, the, you know, we started with the idea that ultimately everything is gonna be gaming in the metaverse because that's where it's all gonna go, right? So whether it happens, you know, quickly, not so quickly, in the future, it doesn't matter, it's all gonna wind up there. And, you know, with the core philosophy of the hero's journey, um, things are gonna change, right? So it may not be something that you think about consciously right now, but you will be in the future. And every single movie or TV show that you watch, you're on somebody else's journey. You're on Spider-Man's journey, you're on Batman's journey. And you might have some association with that character because they've overcome something similar to what you may have overcome. But at the end of the day, it's not you, it's Spider-Man. And what's gonna happen is things are shifting where people are gonna wanna become the hero of their own journey. And Web3 is gonna make that happen for the first time. And it's through NFTs, it's through the metaverse, it's through blockchain technology where people now can become these characters in these worlds. So we started something called Kumite, which is this epic battle between heroes and villains. We did a 9600 collection. We sold out very quickly in the worst time of the market in June. But, and then we, we did what's called a vortex tournament where all the families competed against each other to see who was the most powerful in the Kumite universe. And the goblins won, much to my dismay. I wasn't a goblins fan, but they did such a great job in the community. Um, and they won the tournament. And, um, but, you know, all those people got so immersed in those characters that they believed that it was them. And they did everything they could to become those characters. And what's gonna happen over time is, through gamification and through gaming and through acquisitions and through journey and going on that hero's journey, people are gonna become these heroes in their own world. You, so you're not, when, you know, you might ultimately wanna play a game where you're Spider-Man in a new world. 
but what's going to be even better is how you're going to be the hero in your world. And you're going to want to play with or against your friends who are the heroes of their worlds. And we want to make that happen. And uh, so that's why, you know, the gaming side of it was so critical was that, that journey and that, that hero's journey side. Yeah, so Garib's side, Nakumate, I think a lot of it is that how do you build that hero's journey and have the higher meaning and purpose in that world. And so for me, because my background was the gamification side, it's like, oh, how do you apply game design to make this world better? And so when I thought about MetaBlocks, it was also about how to use blockchain Web3 technology to empower the real world. And so the way we tackle this epic meaning and calling and purpose is, you know, first of all, we're thinking about, okay, what's truly scarce in the real world? Well, it's, uh, you know, gold and real estate. And, but gold is still fungible, right? You, you trade gold with me, it doesn't really matter if it's the same quantity. But real estate is, is totally different. Real estate, you know, your home, my home, even if it's the same dimension. You know, we, I have my memory, I have my first child, you graduate from school there, you know, it's just different. So what we, what we did with the MetaBlocks is first of all, we divided up uh, different cities, like real world cities, into a lot of blocks, and they're all NFTs. And the, but the mission, for MetaBlocks is actually we want to preserve humanity's most important memories onto the blockchain so it doesn't live on a single server. Because my uh, co-founder, June, who, uh, who's right there, uh, is from Google, and he noted that uh, you know uh, all our memories these days are on like Google Photos, Google Drives, Dropbox, and now they're charging for the service, right? Before 2000, you know, you know, your photos are printed out physical. You go to grandma's home, you see those physical photos. After 2000, all, the, all of them are digital, and they're on a single server. So 30 years later, you know, Google could sh shut down the service, you know, any business can potentially go out of business or just our grandchildren don't want to pay for grandpa's Google photos for the rest of their lives. In which case, all their memories are gone. And so we wanted to have a way to preserve our precious important memories onto the blockchain. And so that's where we attach that to the real estate game I described. So you own NFTs of the real world, real places, but then in order to level it up and generate more in-game resources, MetaRen, you actually have to submit different memories related to that location. And so the more memories that place accumulates, the more valuable the NFT becomes. And so we, we use a game mechanic with all these different components, different core drives, unpredictability, empowerment of creative feedback, but ultimately it's filling that, that mission of preserving important memories. So basically every location can become like a museum or historical landmark. Before, if you want to preserve memories forever, like the government has to do a national holiday or have a memorial. So MetaBlocks just aims to turn all of that, democratize that, and every place can do that. So, so we want people to feel like, hey, this is a timeless thing, right? The things that we care about, you know, uh, you know we have people on MetaBlocks submitting, this is, my, this is when I had my first child, this is uh, to remember to see his family member, or this is where I proposed to my wife. Those things are timeless, and we want those to feel that timeless value and engagement on, uh, on our platform. Oh, cool, yeah, I love it. And um, you know, the way we think about it um, is what I call like the infinite journey or the infinite game. Um, so when you think about the idea that we, we, we all, every day in our lives, we play either a finite game or an infinite game, right? You play a, you know, you play a sport, you know, there's a winner, there's a loser, it's over. And that's a finite game. But then life is an infinite game, right? It just keeps going on, the day ends, and then the next one starts. So um, Simon Sinek actually wrote a book called The Infinite Game, and it got me thinking a lot. He wrote it years ago. And it's like, well, how do you take something and how do you apply the infinite world to the Web3 world? And you know, for me, it was very simple because it was uh, when I did the analysis and I saw like, okay, you know, a movie comes out, it's in, gonna be in a specific number of theaters. A toy comes out, it's gonna be, they're gonna make X number, it's gonna be on a shelf. That's a finite number of people, a finite revenue, a finite, uh, just everything. Disney is gonna report their earnings and they're gonna know within five or 10% or less, you know, what their earnings are gonna be. And that's a very finite number because they could build their business that way. But I don't want to be in the finite world, I want to be in the infinite world. How do I create an infinite business? And through Web3, you know, when we did uh, Kumite and we did the drop, you know, so much about was how do, we, um, how do we embrace the community, how do we engage the community, and rather than say to them, you know, you can only do X, Y, Z with our characters, it was how do we not only 
enable them to do it, but then encourage them and even give them the tools to do that. So one of the things that we're doing is we're actually creating tools so that people can make their own comic books and tell their own stories. And not tell our stories, let them tell their stories. Again, going back to their own hero's journey. Let them make their own games, let them make their own you know, NFT toys and share it with their friends and sell those. And now all of a sudden, rather than being limited to what we can think of, we're being limited to what we can do, now we have this unlimited potential. And I call it um, open source IP is kind of the word that I've been using to describe what we're doing, where all of a sudden now, people now can take our characters, become these characters, and then you could just use them how you feel like you want to create. And because for a lot of times, people can't necessarily, people might be able to think of a great story, but it's hard to think of a character. Um, and we're going to help people along that way. And it's not just one franchise. We've got you know, we've got over 30 in development, we'll have over 100 in the whole world, so we're building a massive universe. So almost any type of character or world that you think you want to succeed or live in, you'll be able to create a character or have a character that you could build within. And that builds what we call an infinite business. So when people tell me, Garab, can you quantify how, how big this could be? It, there's no concept of quantifying it, because if we have 100,000, if we have a million, if we have 10, 50, 100 million people building in this world, who's to say how many mobile games will be created or how many toys or how many comic books can be created from this? So one of the things about this world that I think we should all be thinking about is what is that infinite potential that you can create in Web3? Yeah, in game design, what's interesting about finite games and infinite games is the goal of the finite game is to have it end because when it ends, you're, the, you're, you're a winner. The goal is to become a winner, and of course, you win when it ends, right? Whereas the goal of the infinite game is to have the game keep going for as long as possible, because as long as you keep playing, you know, you're having fun together, and you know, that's, that's where you win, so you're, it's not trying to win and, and close it. And I think there's a lot of projects out there, it's really about getting short-term results. You know, the way they manage tokenomics or play to earn, it's like they try to just uh, really hijack the kind of user acquisition, say, hey, everyone join right now, and then as time goes by, the later people get burned, right? And that's kind of like a, a finite game mentality, but infinite game is about how do we keep it going on and on and on for everyone, so everyone's enjoying the experience. So I think uh, Kumite is doing a really good job on that. And I remember when Kumite uh, was, was minting, was launching, it was like, it was already after the, the winter started, and so I was a little worried for them, but they, they sold out, and you were number one on, on what, what was the metric you were on? Yeah, we were, we were number one on OpenSea for the day, you know, for our new launches, uh, which was incredible. Um, and, and just the reaction that we got. With the last few minutes, um, I, I just want to give kind of a shout out to the next new IP and franchise that we're working on, and then you guys can tell what he's working on. Uh, we just announced today that we launched a brand new franchise called Fully Charged. Um, and it's a character franchise that I created with Jim Quick, who's the, uh, who's the number one brain coach in the world. And we created a, a character franchise about a guy and his sister who are, um, they're, they're, um, they're ethical hackers. And they use their brain to succeed, as, and they use their brains to succeed as opposed to trying to beat people up. And um, so, and it kind of courted Jim, and there's a really cool logo, you know, with a brain. And they also have low-level electricity power, and I don't want to give away how they get it, but it's, it's a pretty cool superpower that they have. And we announced that with one, a company called OneOf. So they have um, a pretty large distribution platform for NFTs um, about with sports and music. And we also brought on eBay as a partner. So they're going to be promoting this uh, NFT project to 160 million people, and it's going to be minted on Polygon. So we've got some really big partners that we're working with on this. And that's another thing about kind of the infinite world. It's just the idea that you, know, you don't have to do this alone. You can work with other people. You know, in these early stages, the more partnerships and friends that you could make and create, you know, the better you're going to be. You know, we're all on a rocket ship, and it doesn't matter what seat you have. You know, you just want to be on that rocket. Yeah, and uh, one of the interesting things that we explore a lot in this space is how to do your game, uh, game loop rollout. Because sometimes you have your long-term vision, right? Let's say you wanted to have a horse, but you got to start with the MVP. And, um, you know, obviously you don't want to launch MVP with just like the eyes of the horse and the lungs and the tail, just dead animal on the ground. You want to start out something that's like uh, still living and breathing like a smaller animal, like a squirrel 
and then go into a dog and eventually a horse. So thinking about that rollout plan that it still has this intact game loop and activity loop is very important. So when we think about Metablocks, you know, at the beginning it's just purely about the real estate. And then eventually we got into say, hey, people can upload their memories to, to the real estate. It's not on the blockchain yet. And then slowly, slowly we add moments. And so we're slowly still rolling out. And down the road, we want to add the AR uh, concept where people explore a city. They can immediately say, hey, I want to see the most inspiring memories of the city or most heartwarming. And actually, uh, for this event, we want to like, immortalize everyone here being the first uh, Seattle NFT conference. And so we're actually doing a giveaway quest which is if you guys take a photo of us here on stage and you upload it onto the Metablocks, this location, you just go to uh, seattle.metablocks.co and then we're doing a giveaway of you know, anywhere between 200 to $700 worth of uh, NFTs. Uh, everyone gets it who, who finishes the quest. You also have to uh, take a photo with the sponsor, uh, the Pinata people, but once you, and then the goal is to keep that immortalized because this is the ever, first ever. So yeah, feel free to go again, Seattle metablocks with an X dot co and can do that. So, but the idea is that you first get to a phase and then you slowly grow from there. So I'm curious about how do you think about, you know, rolling out your game loop and schedule because I'm sure there's a ton of things in your head. How do you plan what step one, step two? Yeah, so the way we think about it is there's actually been a pretty cool tried and true roadmap for comic books becoming films and TV shows and games. And that's really what we're doing. So the first step was create the story and then and then do the NFT drop. So now people can own characters in that world. We're working on, the, on digital comic books right now called Webtoons, so we're gonna be releasing those in about a month. So now people that can now read the stories that we've come up with, and that's where we really bring out each character. And that creates the emotional connection between you and the characters. And, and that emotional connection is what, is what drives so much. It's one of the reasons why comic books have you know, taken over Hollywood is because so many people already have that connection. And then we're also doing a trading card game as well, and that's gonna help build out all the different gaming mechanics of how the heroes fight the villains. And, um, and then once we do that, then all of a sudden, it, it comes what I call inbound. You build a big funnel where people love what you do, and then so many people out are gonna call you up and be like, hey, I love what you're doing. I want, and I've already been prepping my film and television producer friends that this thing is going out, um, and they're all gonna have to fight each other for it, so, um, so yeah, so there's a really cool kind of emotional roadmap that we put together. Yeah, so I think once you master that, think about what's your long-term infinite game strategy, the game with the rollout, and the meaning and purpose, this is when you think about how to make each day engaging and fun, right? And that goes into what we call the right brain core drive design. Uh, core drive 357, empowerment of creative feedback, so giving people meaningful choices, self-expression, social influence and relatedness of group quests, uh, collaborative, competitive, uh, you know, uh, social gifting and unpredictability and curiosity, so a lot of Easter egg surprise moments. Right? But it's important because a lot of people, when they think about gamification, they just kind of say, yeah, just throw game mechanics, let's just throw all these things we find in games. And you, you know that all games have game mechanics in them, right? But most games are not successful. So it's almost naive to think that, hey, we just take these game elements that are even found in boring games and put it into our product, our platform, our Web3 project, it suddenly becomes fun and amazing. It just doesn't happen. You have to have the core and soul of what makes a game epic. And those are those core drives. Those are the things we've been just discussing about. Cool. Well, thank you so much, everybody. It was wonderful to see you all. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.